Nous passons maintenant à la décision associée au deuxième sous-point. Veuillez vous référer au document 4.b et à son projet de décision au paragraphe 7. Si nous pouvions le voir sur les écrans, merci. Voilà. Draft Decision 17.com 4.b et idem, puis-je demander au, au comité d'adopter le projet de décision 17.com 4.b tel qu'il apparaît sur les écrans. Je ne vois pas d'objection, donc je déclare la décision 17.com 4.b comme étant adoptée. Merci beaucoup. So before uh, opening the, the next item on our agenda, allow me to take this opportunity to present to you the outcomes of the Bureau meetings held since the last committee session. Dear colleagues, as decided by the committee, the Bureau of the 17th session of the committee is composed of the following members, vice chairpersons, Switzerland, Czechia, Panama, Republic of Korea, and Botswana. Rapporteur, Mr. Ramiro Maurice Silva Rivera Peru, and myself as chairperson. I would like to first thank you all members of the committee for electing me as chairperson of the 17th session of the committee. Allow me to also seize this opportunity to sincerely thank my colleagues of the Bureau for their active participation hard work and spirit of cooperation throughout this year. Thanks to their help, we were able to examine and decide on a number of important issues. It has been my pleasure to work with them. Dear committee members, according to the rules of procedure of the committee and the operational directives of the convention, the committee entrusts its bureau with significant tasks and responsibilities. During the past year, we had three online meetings on 7 March, 6 May, and 23rd of June, as well as one in-person meeting on 4 October 2022. In addition, one electronic consultation was held in March 2022. This year, the Bureau examined eight international assistance requests up to 100,000 US dollar, all of which were granted respectively to Chad, Colombia, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, the Dominic Republic, Kyrgyzstan, Sam Kitts and Nevis, and Thailand, as well as to nine state parties in the Caribbean, which submitted a joint international assistance. This was particularly encouraging, as it was the first time an international assistance request has been submitted by multiple state parties. These requests represent a total amount of 730,255 uh, US dollars that are granted from the Intangible Cultural Heritage Fund. This approved, these approved projects aim to safeguarding specific living heritage practices, developing community-based inventories, strengthening heritage policies, and building national or local capacities for implementing the convention. Please join me to congratulate the states that have been granted financial assistance this year and wish them successful safeguarding of their living heritage. Congratulations. <laughs> Secondly, uh, the Bureau uh, dealt with issues resulting in the first ever application of two provisions from the Convention and its operational di uh, directives. In June 2022, the Bureau established the procedure on how to treat the request by Ukraine to inscribe the domination culture of Ukrainian borscht cooking as a case of extreme urgency in accordance with Article 17.3 of the Convention and Paragraph 32 of the operational directives. This nomination file was then evaluated by the evaluation body and subsequently forwarded to the fifth extraordinary session 
of the Committee on 1st July 2022 for examination. The element concerned was inscribed on the urgent safeguarding list within 10 weeks of receiving the request. In October 2022, the Bureau was made aware of a series of communications that the Secretariat received from third parties requesting to remove Ducas of Ad from the representative list. This concerns the, L the element processional giants and dragons in Belgium and France, an element incorporated on the representative list in 2008. An element, this case is the first application of the new provisions, paragraph 40. Point two, E of the operational directives related to the removal of an element as established through the revisions of the operational directives by the ninth session of the General Assembly in July 2022. Accordingly, the Bureau recommended to bring the removal request to the attention of this session of the committee, and we shall discuss this case under item 8, of the agenda this week. Finally, the Bureau coordinated the venue for this session based on the consultation with the committee members. The venue was changed from UNESCO headquarters to Rabat, Kingdom of Morocco, giving my country the honor to welcome you all here this week. Dear members of the committee, allow me to point out at this stage that the committee we need to elect the new Bureau members at the end of this session. I would like to encourage all members to start consulting amongst their respective electoral group to identify their bureau members for the next year, as well as to identify a rapporteur. Before I open the floor for comments, I would like to underline that transparency continues to be an important guiding principle for the organization of the meetings of our bureau as was the case in the past two years, and in accordance with Recommendation 69 of the Open-Ended Working Group of, on Governance, the Secretariat asked the Bureau members to communicate the date and venue of each Bureau meeting within their respective electoral group. Furthermore, the agenda documents and decisions of each Bureau meeting of the committee of this convention are published online and available for consultation. In addition, the Secretariat shared the decisions of the Bureau with all Bureau members with a request that they transmit them to the committee members of their respective electoral groups. This is the end of my presentation on the activities of the Bureau. I will briefly open the floor for comments, questions, or clarifications with regard to what I have presented. Does anybody wish to intervene. I see no request for the floor. So there are no decisions to be adopted for this report. We are therefore ready to move to our next item.